There's three kinds of daily heave a hook I would think of, right? There's a deep lace, which is where my leg goes all the way across like this. And then there's a shallow. And with the shallow, there's a weak shallow, which is where I'm like on the thigh here. And then there's a strong shallow where my foot comes up on the hip. Here's a weak shallow. This is a strong shallow, okay? If you're trying to off balance the guy or do bolos, you really want the strong shallow. It's extremely strong. But again, if you're used to playing too close in the position, you're gonna think you have a De La Hiba hook and he's gonna pop his leg straight and you're just gonna lose it. So when you create the slide back and you get that foot up on the hip, now pop your leg straight, even if his leg is straight as a board, that foot is stuck. And that creates the off balance. So if you really wanna start doing Baron Bolos, you need to be able to knock the guy off balance first, right? So if you're not good at getting that off balance, the bolos are gonna be really hard to work. And the key to being able to get that off balance is having the daily heave hook strong. Most people are so focused on getting the hook, they're not paying attention to the distance, okay? And the cool thing is, if you guys were here yesterday, is if you're good at maintaining your distance in the first place, most of the time, as soon as you get to daily heave, you already have a strong hook. So go up. So, of course, if we start here and he's really close, I have to do this step I showed you. But if you guys are really good at maintaining distance in the first place, so I'm back here, that by the time I get the collar and I pull in, I'm already in a very powerful position. So being able to maintain that distance early is gonna make it such that when you do achieve the position, it's already really strong. Does that make sense? That's what I was alluding to uh, yesterday when I said if you just maintain distance, most all of the grips will appear to you and they'll be in a much easier way. So before we get into the bolo, we're just gonna focus on off balancing mechanics. We're focusing specifically on with the collar right now. At the end, we're gonna talk about the sleeve and the belt grip. And in reality, all three of them function basically the same way. It's the same off balance, it's the same leg work, just the grip changes. Okay, but we're learning the collar first because if someone's pressuring into you, it's nice to have that collar to create the separation. And again, you see I push to help create that. So now I've set the hook, we got a good hook, but sometimes you're gonna feel, even though you have the good hook, it's hard to take this guy backwards. Usually that's because this leg is a little bit more forward about right there, perfect. Here, there's no way I'm gonna take him backwards, but that's fine. I'm gonna take my foot that was on the ribs and I just put my foot lightly on his hip. I don't push at all. I'm barely touching his hip. And now I'm just gonna pull my knees to my chest and flatten up a little bit and it makes it really easy to pull and load him in on my feet. From here, I can lift and I'm gonna off balance him all the way over there so he falls out that way. And then that's gonna turn into a bolo later, okay? We're not even doing the bolo yet, we're just learning to off balance your opponent. If nothing else, if you can just learn how to off balance your opponent well in De La Hiva, you can turn this into a single leg, you can turn it into whatever else you want. You can just scramble and try to tackle them. But I want you guys to learn how to control properly. You can go online and find bolos and like crab rides and all sorts of stuff everywhere. There's tons of content on that. But the thing that there's not tons of content on is how to properly control the positions, right? How to actually put everything together. That's what's gonna make you able to set the position up. If you can start setting up the bolo, you can start making up your own finishes. There's so many variations, okay? But knowing how to set the hook right is, is everything, okay? So let's focus on that one more time. Again, he's right, you see how close he is? I don't like this. I get space, I set the hook. Now my foot goes on the hip. And instead of going backwards, because his weight's that side, I just pull my knees to my chest, pull the collar in, and it's gonna become really easy to load him up. Flip him over, and then now we can start progressing and finish, okay? And we'll get into the bolo a little bit later. Yeah, like, what's the... Most like, important thing is distance, always distance. Okay, so it's more important than anything, yeah. Distance, but then like, you want to tilt the person? You, like, you can't you pick that. Body, like, you can't pick, you can't, because I don't know what she's gonna do. Yeah. Right, so I can't say, oh, you want to take them backwards, because she may be forward, you need to take her it's forward. A defense. It's a defense position where you keep the distance, and then you do the setup. So, uh, were you here yesterday? Yes. Okay, yeah. So, when I'm setting distance, yeah. it's always going to start putting pressure on her. Yeah, yeah. So, just stand here, watch. Okay. Look, if I have a collar, step over here a little bit. Right. Okay, if I have a collar, right, like this, uh, and she just stay put here, don't move, okay? Do not move your feet. Right, that's eventually, that's going to break her down. She's gonna have to respond, you know what I mean? So if you have a grip and you start to back away with that grip, 
that's going to slowly over time build a pressure on her that she has to respond to. Even if she goes to both knees, go to both knees. So she came down, okay? So you stay exactly where you are. Right, it's like I'm just gonna drag her across the mat, right? So that mechanic, mechanical force is kind of always building in the background. So if I'm here and I have this and I start backing away, yeah. it's like the stuff will just start appearing, right? So now, of course, as you learn more attacks, you're gonna learn more of what appears, but the more I back up, the more mechanical force I have, right? Because I have more rip. So now this hits harder. So now I can take her backwards. If I couldn't take her backwards, then probably I can go overhead. And if I can't do that, probably I can kick the leg out. You know what I mean? So your number one objective should be to maintain distance. And then the techniques will appear to you. And if you don't know what to do in a particular situation, that's expected because there's millions of situations. You're gonna learn over time, but as a good general rule, you're always gonna to wanna to keep space. It's never gonna be good for you if they're over top. When you're looking at the larva, like the weakest point, because you want to wrap your body around their leg and tell them, I mean, do something else. That's the main. Order. Yeah, but I'm not even like, again, I think this is like a mindset change you need to have. I'm not like trying to do, it's not like I want them to do that. Yeah. I don't care what they do, I just adapt to what they do, right? So I might go with someone and I'm here and just stay straight up and be leg straight as a board. I could just do this, see? And I could just go under here, right? I don't really, I don't want her to do it. It's not like I need her to bend so I could do daily heva. Cause like if she came down and keep your leg straight, yeah, yeah. bend over, yeah. You know, I could do this. If her leg stays straight, I can go for a triangle. That's kind of nice, right? And then I go for an omopata, and then she deadlifts. That's cool. I can throw a matrix, right? So I just kind of, like, you just have to, like, not get too attached to doing any one thing. Understand what you can do. Learn techniques over time. But if you're too attached to making one thing work, you'll be trying to put a hook in when, like, it's the wrong time. Make sense? Actually, I'll mention the sleeve a little bit right now. Realistically, it's the same idea. I set space, okay? I have the foot on the hip or the ribs. Here, I can just pull the sleeve over this way instead of the collar, and I got a backwards knockdown. Come back up. Okay, if his weight is a little bit more forward, I can just put the foot on the hip, pull my knees to the chest. Same exact overhead move. Okay, go back up. If his leg is more back, right, like this, I can just push the hip out and go to sit up guard or something like that, okay? But it's the same principle, right? With the sleeve or with the collar, the same main three mechanics for off balancing. Does that make sense? Okay? So now we're gonna start working on the bolo. This is where it's gonna get a little bit harder. Okay, it seems like a lot of people here have worked bolo before, so we're not starting from ground zero. Um, first thing to understand with bolo, there's many ways to do the bolo, the crab ride, and that whole thing. So it's analogous to talking about passing. If someone was like, you know, should I Toriando or should I Nika? It's like, well, both. Like, they're both really good. There's going to be plenty of variation in how you want to do it. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to be a bit more broad, and I'm going to focus on what I think are the main two or three mechanics that if you're not using them, are going to make a huge difference for you. So the first one we're going to start with is the stomp to lift your opponent's hips. Uh, some of you guys have already seen do this. Some of you guys probably haven't. So we're gonna focus on that. So lay flat on your back. We're gonna reverse engineer this. So he's gonna be flat on his back. We're gonna be here. He's gonna put his arm straight up to get it out of the way. Okay, and look, we're here, his legs are in the air. So we're just mirroring each other. My right leg comes in between his legs. His does the same to mine. And now my outside leg is gonna come over. Now I'm bowling him. If I went here and he brought this in, now he's bowling me, right? So we're gonna use this to learn how to lift the guy's hips. So when I'm here, he's gonna move this arm just for the drill to make it easier. I bring my right hip thigh really close to his thigh, okay? And now I'm gonna start to press down until my right toes can get close to the floor on my tiptoes like this. From here, I continue to stomp towards the floor and it's really easy to do a bridge and lift his hip. Once I've lifted his hip, I can just grab the hip here uh, like this and press up. And now this is really key. Once I lift the hip, I want to block his hip from coming back down with my hand. When you're fighting someone really big and strong, you're gonna lift here and if you just try to go straight to the back, they'll wiggle back down. Once I bench press this, even if I let go of my legs, which I would keep them, but even if I did, get your hips back down, he cannot come back. This is framed up on the hip. 
I can grab the neck here, and now you can take the back finish of your choice. I could twist her hook, I could just throw my other hook over, it doesn't matter, okay? So we wanna lift the hips so that we can bench press it with the top arm. So go back here, right? So we're here, so he lifts his legs up, we're like this, left leg over. Do not reach with this. So I keep this tight. I press down until I can get my right toes on the floor. And see I'm flat on my hip here? I'm not on my side like this, that will be hard. All right, we wanna be in tight here. I keep that pressure until my right toes touch the floor. Keep pressing and now I bridge his hips up. Right, he'll try to come back down with his hips. I bench press the hip up. Now my right arm can just grab the back of the neck or whatever I want. We can shrimp out, throw our hook in, and take the back, okay? We're starting with that mechanic because from teaching this many times, if I jump straight into the bolo and you can't do that fundamental mechanic, it's gonna throw off the rest of your finishes, okay? So we're gonna start with that point. Once you guys can do that, then we're gonna go into one of the easier bolo variations first, and then we're gonna get more complicated, okay? All right, guys, let's go. One, two, three. Go down until my right toes can touch. I'm gonna bridge his hips up. If you rush to the back, if you go like this and you try to grab this and pull it in to get the back, what's gonna happen, he's gonna frame you with his hand and he's gonna start wiggling away and you're gonna lose the whole position, okay? You have a moment to get this, so you wanna hit it. When I go here, I launch his hips up like this. Put your hips back on the floor. I get this brief moment where I launch him up. And if the guy's like 100 kilos or something, and I fight guys like that in the gym where I'm trying to work it and they're really heavy, if you rush this, you're gonna miss this chance. I launch the hip, and usually I can't even hold that that long because they're gonna be spazzing on your legs and stuff. I gotta catch this and bench press it up. Once I have this lock, he cannot recover. Now we can lighten the legs and start working our way out and see turn back into me with your hips. There's no way. I have all day to throw this. But if you rush this where you're here, right, like this, and you try to grab and go here really quick, he's gonna frame you and wiggle back out and you lose the whole position. Okay, so just make sure that when you get that hip launch, you frame the hip, okay? All this being said, the bolo is really fun to work. Realistically, the most important thing for you guys to get good at the bolo is knowing how to knock the guy over in De La Hiva. If you can knock him over in De La Hiva, you can just invert and make shit up and you'll get pretty far. This is the lapel control bolo. So somehow we get the knockdown, right? So he falls over, perfect. I like, uh, scoot back that way a little bit, perfect. Right, so I like to do the lapel bolo, like where instead of grabbing the hip, when I knock someone over and they don't post their hand, okay? And for whatever reason, when you demo it in a drill, they don't do that. In a real match, they usually post their hand. It's hard to say what they're gonna do. So if I knock them over and he drops to his elbow or his shoulder, go all the way to the shoulder, the problem here is a lot of times I don't like to let go to go to the hip because when I let go of this, he's gonna psycho spaz pushing my hand off the hip. Okay, if he go back up, if he posts his hand, stay up on your hand, like a knockover and stay, bring your hip in the air. Yeah, here I can go for the hip easy because he's stuck on his hand. So that makes sense? So I'll grab the hip for this finish variation, right? But if he lands on the shoulder, I'm just gonna keep this. I'm gonna invert through and I bring my shin all the way through under here, okay? And I go tight. My top arm, I'm gonna catch this and pull in here. I can grab the ankle or the pant leg. Okay, and this is the position we're in. I just call this a failed bolo position. Okay, it's like a nice intermediate or like an intermediate position between attacks. See, this leg kind of clamps this in, and my shin's under. It's hard to move. From here, I can rock up, and now what we're going to do is we're going to put our left foot behind his knee, and I shoot my hip in, and now it's basically the exact same motion we just did, just with our foot behind the knee, and I can pull him up for the back. It's the same bridge we just did. Of course, I'll frame here, but this one's so powerful, a lot of times you could just get the back directly, okay? I can do the same thing with the foot all the way through like we just did as well, okay? So I'm here, right, let me get the collar first. Right, so I'm here, I just knocked him over. Boom, I come through and catch here, right? I can rock up, I could do it with the foot here, or I could even shoot in here. Boom, shoot, frame on the hip, see? Now scoot out and take the back, okay? The main idea here is that shin through position, right? So go ahead and stand up. A lot of times with this one, I'll feel as they're falling, I'll feel they start to drop, and you just use that to go through. Again, see the shin position? 
This allows you to switch from the bolo position to here like this, right? I can lift and thread this. Now I can shoot through. Of course, I'll grab that. I'm here, we catch this, lift, shoot through, and lift. Okay? Putting it all together. All right, and again, there's so many bolo finish variations. Don't treat it like, should I do this one or should I do it like that? This guy showed it this way, this guy showed it that way. If you watch like uh, Espen, uh, Mikey Musumeki, uh, Levi Leary Jones, Janata Alves, Nick Sowles, Daniel Myra, uh, they all do their bolo with slight different variations and there's no like, this is the right choice, right? So it's best for you guys rather than trying to go, I wanna do it this way, I wanna do it that way. Just understand how all the different patterns work and spend a lot of time there and you're gonna to start to feel which one's hit for you and you're gonna to have to kind of put it together yourself. So don't limit yourself with like one instructional or one style, just learn how the patterns work and then you'll start to get it. We're starting with this one because I think it's one of the easier ones to process. Um, with just that stomp mechanic. Yeah, so we'll look at the leg clamp bolo or the shin clamp bolo. I don't know, everyone has different names. Um, mechanic as well, because it's a very, very useful one. Uh, I like to use that a lot more when I grab the hip. Um, but again, you want to focus on understanding multiple mechanics and just spend a lot of time in this position and you're going to learn how you can put everything together, right? But don't try not to think about it like you have to do it one particular way. There's a lot of variations, okay? So let me use, there it is. Okay. Right. So now you be on this side, we're gonna do the shin clamp. So be down. So this one, uh, you can really do it anytime, but I like to do this one a lot. So stand up. If I knock them over and they post the hand. So let's say I have the daily Heva, I get a knock over and he posts his hand and keeps his hips in the air. Like this, right? So here I'm always gonna push. And what I like to do is keep the foot in the bicep or even the chest here, because now he can't take his weight off this hand without falling. Does that make sense? If I go here too early, he can now try to get his weight back up and then start fighting, right? So when I get the knockover, I start kicking the chest here like that, right? Now I can grab the hip, okay? This is really key. This makes it impossible for him to come back, right? Now I grab the hip. So now go ahead and just sit your butt to the floor we're gonna, so I can demo this. Okay, for the shin clamp, what I want is my right foot, I'm gonna like grab his rib cage here like this, okay? See, I'm, I'm really tight, I'm not deep. I'm really tight like that. I grab the hip, and now I'm gonna invert through, and I wanna keep my weight up on my shoulder here and see how I have that foot still hooked on his rib cage. Now as I start dropping this, it creates a pressure on his thigh. Keep this heavy on the floor, see? And I can start lifting his hip here, like that. Once I do that, I wanna press it up, and I use my palm to help hold his hip in the air until I can kind of wedge him up with my elbow. And now I can shoot all the way through into the stomp we did before. All right, go back. Arash, can you go to the other side so you can get the hip angle? So stay here. So look, I'm up here. I catch this shin position. I start stomping this to the floor. And see, as I do this, I try to get my palm to help support his hip up, okay? Now the thing is, once I have this here, I like to double hip. Now, if I get this up enough, I can get my elbow out and now I have his hip locked up. Now I can shoot my knee through and now I'm back into kind of the stomp finishing position. And I, I can even go to a full uppercut like this with my knuckles like that, right? See here? Now it's very hard for him to come back down. Switch this over, block here, push, and take the back. Okay, that's a shin clamp. Right, so now sometimes I might initiate with one, I might go to a shin clamp, go back to a stomp, go to the failed bolo position. There's gonna be a lot of different finish variations, okay? So go down. I'm gonna do it now from double guard. So just imagine I'm here, right, boom, I turn him out, I catch the hip, and look, I shoot this across and I go through. One other really good thing about the shin clamp is if he tries to retake my back here, so you go for my back, as long as my shin is here, there's no chance of a re-back take. Sometimes if you do this and you do it wrong, now take my back, he can start taking my back. So if you do the classic stomp bolo and you do it incorrectly or you mess something up, there's always a chance of a re-back take. The shin clamp is extremely safe in that they cannot take your back while your shin is right here. So there's like a nice safety with it. So when in doubt, the shin clamp's a good bet, okay? Here, catch the hip, boom, and I'm like here. 
See, I could grab the leg and do this, right? I can double the hip like this. See, put your hips back to the floor heavy. See, boom. And see, I lift them up, wedge, shoot the knee through, and finish. Okay? Key point, you need that foot to kind of pull in tight on the ribs, and it should be very painful when you do it. Your shin cuts into their thigh. They should feel a really sharp cut into their thigh that makes them kind of lift their hip. Okay? All right, guys, let's go to try. One, two, three. Your right, uh, what is that? Your right uh, foot pulling into you. So this is wedged into his thigh and stay up on the shoulder and stomp this to the floor while you stay up on the shoulder. Yeah, now stomp that to the floor. There you go, you see what I mean? You know, you have to, there's a way, this is more advanced, let me do it. But like, you can get really comfortable being up on your shoulder like that. So like if I'm up in here, say I'm in like a crab right or something, Right? Like if I can bow, I use my hands to keep my support. But like when I'm in here, I'm so tight here. See, move here, move around. You see how like I'm like really, right? And I'm just balancing everything on my shoulder. Yeah, like there. Now hop your shoulder in closer. Yeah, and you can use your hands to hold your butt. Double up on the same side hip. Yeah, and like use your hands to hold your body weight. It helps you stay up. So it makes sense to hop shoulder closer even. Yeah, now keep this shin pulled in and then now stay up on the shoulder and stomp that to the floor, but stay on the, there you go. You feel that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, now just press this hip up and then yank, shoot your knee under. Uh, no, shoot your knee, right knee all the way through to a stomp, yeah. There you go. That's it, right? But let me do it to you. Like, it's the same, this is a good idea for a crab as well, get on. Just be flat back. Okay, when I'm keeping,